Hello and welcome everybody to some Let's Stream Grand Ages Rome with your host as always Madrybra. This is a little known game by uh, Calypso Media, Calypso Entertainment, the guys who do the Tropico games called uh, Grand Ages of Rome, and it is a Roman city builder game. Uh, fairly unknown as far as I can tell, never really sold that well, but I think it's a really fun game. This is the Augustus expansion pack, which means it's got some extra campaigns to it. We're going to be starting with a classic campaign, and this will be kind of a half informative playthrough where I teach you the game as I play, but I have actually never 100% beaten the campaign, so to a certain point, it'll also be kind of a challenge run, because I want to do every single special challenge in the game if I can. Some of them get pretty difficult. Um, I'm live streaming this whole thing for anyone watching the recording of this. So uh, that's why there's the chat on screen, which looks awful right now, but will look a lot better when we actually get in the game proper. Without further ado, let's get this started. Classic campaign, let's uh, create a new character. And that's one cool mechanic about this game actually, is that um, you kind of level up and have character progression as you go through the campaign, as well as if you play online, because this game has, it's not just a city, city builder, it's got military mechanics and everything. Not nearly as robust as a game more focused on military, but they're there, and not all city builders have that, which I think is interesting. Uh, this game kind of reminds me a little bit of old games like um, Pharaoh. So, I have a few families I can pick from here, and what the families do is each one has a different list of traits that you can get throughout the course of the campaign. Uh, the game's going to seem really quiet right now, but it gets much louder once we get into the proper game, if you're wondering about that. Like, no music is playing right now. That's not, like, low volume or anything. I haven't experimented with many of these uh, too much. I mostly experiment with these guys. All these names are in Latin, so I'm not even going to try. Um... But they have a lot of traits based around accumulating a lot of money very easily and getting a lot of money from trade, so I find them very good. Because after the first few stages, money becomes a big issue. However, I thought for this one, a fun one would be the guys work that are um, based mostly in their workforce, largely slave workforce, because that is a game mechanic you don't often use that much. Or at least I often don't use that much, so I thought this would be a good one to show off. Uh, the other ones, for anyone wondering, um, what is it here? And it's da -da -da -da. Cold blooded, always find a way out. Uh, they're iron resolved. Uh, Renation. I believe these are the jack of all trades guys, but they might also be the military guys. Everyone has a certain amount of military traits. These guys probably have the most. Um, was it knowledge is power? Right. These guys are all about really, really fast research. Um, I don't know their abilities too much, but if it's mostly about speeding up research, I wouldn't find that very worth worthwhile, because research doesn't carry over from stage to stage. So although you have to re-research a lot, and extra speed is nice, you can mostly do that through buying property. And lastly, we have the one that is based almost entirely around upgrading the plebes, which are the lowest class of, of uh, residents, and making sure that they're always fed and stuff. Um, you tend to have a lot of popularity bonuses, I believe, for that. You're appealing to the common people. It's nice, uh, but I tend to consider the most commonly useful one to be the money guys. But we're going to go with the slave workforce guys. The uh, Lucy? Luki? I don't know. Probably Luki, because we're talking Latin here, and they used hard Cs. And weirdly enough, the OK button's on the left and not the right. Uh. I don't know. So you get to pick which one of these handsome young devils we want as our guy. I think we can all agree that the middle guy is clearly the sexiest guy, so we're going to go with him. And uh, because this is a city-building game, we of course have to go with my um, my OTP, Eduardo. Let That's not how you spell Eduardo. Eduardo, let's pull, because you can't... Fit Let's Play. Did I spell Eduardo correctly, chat? Again, I'll remind you, I'm Canadian. We learn English and French. I don't know Spanish at all. I don't know a word of Spanish. Did I spell Eduardo correctly? Uh, what's the bitrate that I'm streaming at? Ooh, I don't remember, actually. Nope, I don't even remember right now. Um, nine megabytes a second? I want to say nine megabytes a second. Go for it. I'm just going to assume that's how you spell Eduardo, and if I spelled it wrong, eh. <laughs> and you can also pick to be a max level character. I think level 25 is max, but I'm not going to do that, because I feel like that's cheating my way to the top. 
All right, now this game is actually voice acted in the parts where it is voice acted, which I think is cool. My exile into Africa is close to an end. Our family has suffered much under the tyrannical fist of Sula. I don't think they spelled it right. Now that the is gone, <laughs> it doesn't look right. To regain our family's fortune, I fear that I still have far too many enemies to safely return. That is why I need you to be my hands in Rome. Carry out my instructions to the letter. A single slip up, and our rivals will seize your throat. Through my sources, I was able to bribe several senators to grant us new estates. The island of Cabrera may be small, but it will suffice for now. Go there and establish a new colony. Make sure that the plebes don't die of starvation. There's one thing I fear. It is a crowd of hungry plebes. So this game takes place uh, when the Republic of Rome was just falling and it was becoming an empire. Um, and throughout the course of the game, at least from how far I've played in, which is maybe 10 or 15 missions in, I've played quite far in but it feels like it's a very long campaign so i might not even be halfway for all i know um you seem to be on the side of the republic you're really into democracy and voting amongst the nobles and you're basically starting off as a small governor for different cities and you're kind of being moved around rome by the different higher-ups to have you build cities and maintain cities um, starting mostly in, in the outstretches and far-off areas of Rome, like North Africa, where you spend a lot of your early time. Um, it's spelled Eduardo. You got it. Really? I got it? It doesn't look right. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, plebes essentially means peasants. They're kind of the lowest, um, the lowest social class in Roman society. Um, not counting, not counting slaves, of course, which were an integral part of uh, Roman society. So here's something you'll see in a lot of the maps. We have objectives, which you do those to win, and you have a bonus objective. If you do a bonus objective, you get some kind of bonus. So if we achieve an entertainment satisfaction of at least 20% when we beat it, we get an extra 50 uh, denarii, which is currency. This is of personal wealth, which means it's attached to our character. We can use this to buy bonuses that carry with us throughout the entire campaign. Also gives us a little tips here and lets us know what our starting resources are. I'll go into how the resources work when we get into it, because it's got a very unique resource system that I haven't seen in another city builder, but I haven't played a whole slew of city builders. I mostly grew up on Pharaoh, uh, so I played a ton of Pharaoh, and I've also played a lot of um, Tropico 4 and 5. I feel like I've also played some other city builders here and there, but really Tropico series and Pharaoh were the big ones I spent a lot of time with. We'll see on our character sheet here, that we have, or we gain every stage, talent points, which we spend in these three trees for permanent upgrades. We also can buy real estate. We unlock real estate by beating missions, especially by beating um, bonus objectives. We can use our money to buy real estate, and this will give us permanent bonuses in our real estate area, area right here. So for instance, I could afford right now to buy a logging camp or a wheat farm, which would permanently give me five more wheat or ten more wood on any mission from now on. I don't need either of those. Those are very easy things to get in general. Um, if the wheat were to give me more wheat, I might do that. Because not every uh, map has a whole lot of room for farming. But wood, I never really have major issues with it. It's nothing that I couldn't easily and cheaply solve. Um, as for the tech tree things here, uh, you can learn different things in city. These are the same for everyone. Your city bonuses... It's largely just about, uh, for the first area of it, it's about saving money and time on quickly setting up the beginning of your stuff. I don't find those very worth it, and you need to spend a lot of points to get to the higher up ones. The higher up ones are good, I guess, but they're not great. All around, I find the city thing to be mostly a bust. Next, you have the military one, which if you go a lot into the military stages, these are, of course, going to be worth it. They give you instant upgrades for different guys, they let you train units faster, cheaper, kind of bonuses like that. But the biggest one you want to look into for whoever you are is your family. This is where you get your unique bonuses for your family. Things like farms, mines, and logging sheds are built upgraded. This is a level 1 talent that saves you a lot of money throughout the course of the game. Here's another one. Three less slaves required for a slave market. Slave markets are the core of your industry with this family. It's 
really good to have strong slave markets with these guys. You're going to be relying on that because a slave market gives you an infinite amount of buildings within its radius that can be manned by slaves. You don't need a house for every single business in that area. If you have a massive farm complex, you could have one slave camp take care of all of that. And then you have a lot of things for, a lot of this is for either cheapening slaves, like this one, slaves work as well as plebes, amazing. That is amazing bonus. Whereas a lot more of the top ones is about efficiency in your buildings and saving money. Without further ado, though, let's get on with the only stage we can do at this point. We Romans You're gonna have to let me know if this is displaying no properly. We do not bow to a king or a queen. It is we, the people, who rule the Republic. Life-giving water, nature of the gods. We brought the light of civilization to the darkness of barbarity. Looks nice. The people of Syria, Egypt, Hispania, and Greece paid homage to Rome. Then the tyrant Sulla marched his army into the Senate and threw the Republic into chaos. Many Romans lost their lives. Hold on, guys, gotta get MLG with the gunner property optics. And faith. Our family stood in defense of the Republic and was cast into exile. Sulla is dead now, yet we still live on the African coast. Our fortune lost in the fire of the Civil War. It is our destiny to return home and take our rightful place among the Romans. First, among equals. Sorry, I had to shield my eyes from the uh, the horrors of seeing Rome, the Roman Republic getting corrupted. Good thing we're going to save that, uh, solve that. Alright, <clears throat> so the controls in this game are a little bit janky. You're going to notice that here and there, probably. But we're in gameplay now. This is as far as you can zoom out unless you want to do this. That's janky and annoying. <laughs> so, we start with our outpost here. We can start building around here. We have a lot of farmland right there that we want to work with. We're probably going to get that completely done by slaves. No time limit on this stage, so I'm going to take my time. We have an aqueduct here, so we've got fresh water. So the first thing I want to do is start building some of our plebes houses here. You'll see down here, these are our resources. We've got brick, no marble, no stone, and wood. As you build lumber camps, you don't need to wait for lumber to come in. It just, all it does is it adds the number of your lumber camps and how productive they are and weighs that against how many buildings are taking up wood. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and build my first few houses. So what I immediately want to do here, we've got a lot of wood around in general, but I'm thinking a lumber camp might be nice right here. <coughs> so I'm going to put that right here and get my first logging shed right here. So if you meet, meet uh, certain criteria, you'll it'll glow yellow like this and you'll get popularity for doing it. It'll make people like you more because it's a good place to put it. I believe the only criteria for popularity through a lumber camp is to have a lot of trees near it, which you're going to want to do anyway because that makes it um, productive. Uh, the house, the plebes houses get popularity bonus if they're next to other plebes houses, so they like being in housing districts near each other. So the first thing we immediately want to do in any colony is get our building supplies ready. So we're going to have more wood to spare once we have that. The next thing we want to do with this population here, each house, house worth of population will work one building. We definitely want to get a brickworks. Brickworks give you popularity if they're near fresh water, like an immediate source of fresh water like um, out here. Or an immediate source of water in general, really. Uh, but we do have an aqueduct here, so that counts as water. So I'm just going to plop that down up here so it's not quite in the way of where I want my housing district. But these guys will work there. We already have 28 wood because this is producing 30, which is fantastic. That's a great amount. Uh, that's a little bonus we get for not clear cutting here. Oh, chat's filling up fast. Hi. You've become addicted to MLG glasses. They're actually incredibly useful. I really like my gunner optics. Let's go ahead and uh, plop another one down here. So, our objectives. Uh, we need to build 15 of these houses and achieve a food satisfaction rate of 50. I want to build 14 of them and then make sure my entertainment is okay first because I don't want to end up succeeding before that happens. 
So we're going to need some food soon. And before we do that, um, I want to get a school early. So a school needs to be placed on the platform to get a popularity bonus. So we're actually going to do that. Uh, platforms are fairly cheap. They let you level out ground. And anything built on them gets little bonuses to how nice it looks. There you go. Okay. So we have a building right there. Let's get a... I, I always forget where things are in this game. Under commercial... Under commerce, we have a slave market. So we have a total of 20 slaves, I believe, you always start with. And you just need a building nearby for a slave market to work. This would capture all of that zone. So I'm going to go ahead and put that slave market right there. We're also going to go under public buildings here and get a small fountain right there. That just spreads hygiene to the area if it has water. And we can research now. So the first thing I always research into is technology. And I immediately get an upgrade for selective cutting. And then I'll get one that gives me more research points, which will let me research faster. Sulu's retirement has rekindled the conflict between the Populares and the Optimates. The Optimates do not wish to see the power of the nobles slip away, but the Populares have gained the love of the plebes and can sway the mob to their advantage. I fear that this may escalate to a new civil war. Now is not the time to choose sides. It is best you appear available to both parties. Sorry if the voice is quiet. Um, as you can see here in the options, not much you can do about that. Voice volume is full, music volume is really low. The game doesn't have very good sound balance. Alright, so now that we have a slave market there, we see the real advantage of our party. We are able to get away with having a lot of buildings manned by slaves. So each little square field here can grow a crop. We want a, a wheat one, we want a pig farm as well. These are two food ones that we want to get early on. Uh, Tiberius just gave us 2,000 denarii, which is money. We can see that up here. You use that in building or upgrading anything. And we're able to crew a lot of things off a very small population through doing this. I'd actually like another brickworks up here. Go down and plop down another house for that. Um, and we already need more wood. We could change the workforce here to slaves, so even less population needs to be working that. However, uh, slaves are less productive than plebes, so I'd rather not. We are, however, going to get that. We're getting another... Uh, Getting another logging camp over there and then getting another house here to work it. This is good. Okay, we're turning it well. Pig farm and wheat farm are both down, so we are producing some food. We can go to our food menu there and see that we are getting meat and wheat. We're in a building frenzy because we finished a lot of buildings close by. That means that we want to quickly get on to doing more building before the building frenzy is done. For a limited amount of time, we build, I think it's three times faster. So we want to go ahead and get us some things that are going to make us some money. So we're going to go ahead and get a grape farm. And an olive farm. Those things are mostly for money. Uh, and we also want... Uh, oof, I think we need a forum for what I want to get next. Yeah, a forum unlocks a lot of buildings. You need stone for it. So we're going to go ahead and get another house up there production and get a stone quarry up there so we start producing stone uh required right you need plebes for an olive farm that's right um we can handle that actually because we will be working our way out here a little bit more in the future but for now we're going to have a small housing district up here it's okay to split things up a little bit selective cutting is done so we can upgrade for a small price our uh, logging sheds. However, if we have the efficiency bonus, which we do not, then it's a lot better. You get the efficiency bonus. Is that being worked by... No, I want that worked by uh, plebes. Yeah. Efficiency bonus is when every person in your country has a job, or your town has a job. And it means that upgrading buildings is half the cost. Is that not within range? It totally is, but it's not counting. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. And we'll find another, another job for him. We can get a water mill for him. A water mill turns our wheat into grain. And we can then get a bakery. So let's go ahead and build a road right here. 
Roads move troops quickly, but the other bonus they do... <clears throat> the other bonus that they do is they allow you to put any main good producing building on it, and they'll produce more goods, as well as a little bit of popularity. So we got efficiency now. There we go. Is everyone working? Okay, everyone's got a place to work. We're still in that building frenzy. Uh, state warning famine, right? We're not producing quite enough food right now. So let's go ahead and go over to food, and actually the bakery is going to help with that. Uh, in fact, yeah, we're already not in a famine. It went away pretty fast now that we're producing bread. Uh, however, another thing that we want over here is we want a butcher shop. Butcher shop lets us turn that meat into sausage, uh, better consumable food. It's also good for later on when we have things like inns and taverns. They'll want sausage rather than just pure meat. Next, we want to build a forum. A forum is the cornerstone of any colony you make. It's a little bit inconvenient because it's so big and bulky. It takes up a lot of room, so you always have to really have a hard time finding where you want to put it. And I'm going to go ahead and actually spend an extra 100 denarii to give it a builder's camp, which speeds up the building of nearby buildings in the area, because it is a very slow building building. They got low food quality, which means we should put a farmer's market over there. So once you start getting enough population, you're going to start having distribution issues, which means you're going to need farmer's markets. So we want a farmer's market right there, and we'll need another population so they can work the farmer's market, and that'll distribute our food there. We were sent some more money. You're sent money at random intervals during some of the missions in the game where they think you're going to run out of money. And to be fair, in this mission, it's very possible you could just easily run out of money. Queuing up some more research there, mostly just, um, I focus very heavily early on on researching how to improve farms and logging camps for efficiency while using less buildings. Yes, we can use the sausage and bread and make hot dogs now, which again is also the cornerstone of any good population. So we're getting crime up here a little bit because they have low food satisfaction. That'll get fixed up when the farmer's market is done and they're easily able to get food. Uh, because they all have jobs, they're going to have incomes and thus they can get food pretty easily. We have a shortage on... is that wheat? Okay. Uh, let's get another wheat farm over here then. Uh, the slaves will take care of manning that. And very soon, any second now, we should have an upgrade to our wheat farms we can do. Now, we have an iron deposit here that I'm likely never going to use. Iron is mostly just for military, and we don't need any military on this map. So I don't think I'm going to bother with it. Man, I wish that build faster. Don't want to spend money on building it faster, though. Uh, so we can get an arena if we want. Um, it does provide a good amount of entertainment, which we want for our bonus thing. However, um, it does take up 10 slaves, and that's as much as we could spend on a second slave market. And again, we are working on a slave economy. There we go. That problem was fixed. So if we check down here, uh, we do not have enough buildings yet. We do not have enough food satisfaction yet to win. We could beeline this and win very quickly. But I'd rather... Uh, good, the form is done. Perfect. So we can now that the form is done, we've unlocked new buildings. And one of them is the Odium, which is the lowest ranked entertainment building. The more of them you have on the map, the better they become. We need more wood, though, so we're actually going to spend some money on upgrade our logging sheds. It's only 125 denarii to do the first upgrade for these. And the reason it's so inexpensive to do that is because we have efficiency. Because everyone here is employed, all of our buildings uh, can be upgraded at half price. This is very important. And tends to come fairly naturally, too, since you never want unemployment. It means if someone's unemployed, then they're not going to be able to afford food or entertainment or anything like that. And thus, they're going to turn to crime very quickly. And crime usually leads to wildfires. And wildfires can really ruin a colony.
Okay, we could get flax production going if we want to. We could also get a port. A port needs to be manned by a higher class of people, though. And we actually do have a small bonus here where our building camps, which decrease the speed required, or the time required to build things, are half cost because we only have a population of plebes. It is a small little bonus for starting off, which is funny because later in the game when we have more upgrades in our family, we're likely going to have a very small plebe um, population. With this family, you tend to have a very high class population with a lot of slaves. Uh, that is how they tend to run it. And I think that's one of the really cool things about this game, actually, is that you can play it many very drastically different ways and still be efficient. So here at our form, we can collect taxes because we don't have a tax, o tax office unlocked. Although we lose a lot of popularity for it, you do it for emergency money if you need it, but it's not very strong. You can also declare martial law, which I'm not entirely... I think it's just to keep you from getting voted out if you're crazy unpopular, but you also lose popularity doing it. So it's not often you'll end up doing that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and I could get an inn and a tavern which provide entertainment. The tavern provides more entertainment, we already have sausage and everything. However, uh, that requires a higher class of people to run, whereas this does not. So I'm actually just gonna plop that down there. And we're gonna drop down another home right there for people to work on it. And uh, we can afford more houses, good. Get another one going there, and those people are going to work at... Um, I want food distribution. What do we not have? Uh, we don't have enough meat and wheat. Okay, we're gonna have to fix that. That building got a popularity bonus for covering enough houses. Uh, so we can upgrade wheat farm and pig farm. You know, upgrade the other wheat one too, just to make sure. Not gonna upgrade the wall, the um, olive or olive or grape ones. Grape ones give you wine. Olive ones give you olive oil. They tend to be for appeasing the higher class of people. Although you can also use olive oil and make trade goods, which you can sell for a lot of money in a port or in a trade market if you have land trade routes. Which this map does not have any land trade routes. Okay. I was just looking around to see if there are any to unlock. So we're at 14. We've completed our food satisfaction. All we need now is more entertainment satisfaction. But we can't afford to build any more houses, or at least any more plebe houses, or else we'll actually have them satisfied. So we're actually going to get a higher class of people with the... Uh, uh, um, Equitic. I don't fucking know. It's it's Latin. It could be anything. I don't know. But we're gonna have them run another one of these uh, odiums. And they should be perfectly happy. I believe. I, I don't think anything is really gonna hold them back. Let's uh let's speed that up a little bit because we're so close to victory on this first stage. And I go to pick up my teacup and realize I didn't make a tea before the stream. And they're all unhappy because they have low entertainment and food and stuff. Because they're unemployed. Low entertainment crisis warning. Yeah, when your job is finished, you'll work there and everything will be great. And boom. Complete. All right, we just need to build one more house and we're done. Preemptively, just to make sure it doesn't drop anything, uh, I'm actually going to make a job for him so he can instantly be employed. So every once in a while, you get at your form uh, milestone that you reach. Uh, they just make your form look nicer. It's purely cosmetic, fun little thing you can do. It says here accomplishments. They don't actually accomplish anything. Uh, I think they're fun. But most of them happen naturally. Alright, and we're about to win. We win! So we just go to campaign now. Takes us back to the map, and we can pick our next mission now between these two. Before we do, though, 
Well, I wrap up what will be the first episode of When It Hits YouTube, but you guys watching the stream live right now, we're going to keep going. Uh, I want to go ahead and spend one of my points. So I can either get mines, uh, farms, and logging sheds are built upgraded, or brutal exploitation. Slave markets require three less slaves. Now, this early in the game, that three less slaves thing is not going to be huge. It's going to be huge later on. Um... Who? Oh god, 200 denarii income when efficiency state? That is awesome. I, I really do find this uh, family tree to be one of the most interesting ones. Um, the money-making one was probably the best one that I've looked at, but this one's nice. Um, I don't know entirely if this will mean that they're already upgraded. As soon as I get the ability to have them upgraded, they will upgrade for free. Or if it has to be new ones built at that point. So I guess we're going to see, because I'm going to pick that one up first, because it is more immediately beneficial to us. We also have 150, or sorry, 1,500 denarii as our personal wealth. We've unlocked another uh, real estate here. When we can spend these, what I like to do right here is early on, I buy the school in Hispania for 1,000. Gives us 10 extra research points. We're going to accept that. So from now on, when we start a mission, before we even get our first library, we're going to be researching. It'll be slow, but we can get that researching going immediately, which is very nice. So, uh, this game auto-saves, actually, each time you get in between missions, which is nice. You can also save during a mission if you need to take a break. But, um, again, live stream people, people watching this live over on Hitbox TV, link in the description if you're on YouTube. I'm going to keep going. But I'm going to do a quick little outro for those of you on YouTube. Thank you, everybody, for watching this first episode on YouTube. Um, if you've enjoyed this game, I'll have a link to it in the description of the video. If you like this video, give it a like. If you like me, give it a subscribe. And until next time, have a nice day.